Across the UK, online and on DAB. The Matthew Wright Show on Talk Radio. Now then, when we fire, uh, just before we uh, look at uh, the new technical qualification, the T-level, and uh, ask whether universities, the Russell Group universities, your top universities, are being snobby by declining to say whether or not they'll recognise it. That's coming in just a moment. First, though, I want to look at the smart toys for Christmas that seem to be anything but. Um, it starts, this story starts with, uh, with Witch magazine that have looked at a, a number of toys that are expected to be big hits uh, this Christmas and found variously they could either be... Um, uh, let's say walkie-talkies there where conversations could be entered by, for example, paedophiles that might be nearby. We have uh, toys that uh, have no uh, sort of online filter, for want of a better word. And we also have uh, several toys that could easily be hacked, again, by those wishing to do harm potentially to your children. Here to guide us through uh, what the potential problems are, how you might be able to spot them, and which particular toys that might be worth uh, avoiding, uh, is Jamal Ahmed, uh, founder of Cassiant Privacy Experts. Uh, they're a sort of data privacy company would that be it yeah, looking out for keeping yeah, us safe right. keeping um, us safe from the bad guys yes yes yeah, so our job basically is to help um, organizations and companies get from where they are now to get to where they need to be in order to meet uh, privacy regulations such as gdpr and pecca and um, other uh, global regulations depending on where they're trading are you um surprised as, as someone who, who has to get their hands dirty with the big boys out there are you surprised that you've got toy manufacturers that are leaving their devices essentially wide open to people who might wish to do children harm i'm not surprised but i am very concerned go on why why are you not surprised i mean i'm not surprised because the kind of being in the industry you see lots of ridiculous things and um tell you, me, at some tell point, me about you stop it getting surprised, <laughs> right? yeah, yeah, yeah that's about the size of it <laughs> exactly but I, i'm very concerned because i mean um Especially in the UK, GDPR, um, it requires privacy by design and default. So that means before you think of a product... Or what is GDPR? So GDPR is the big law that came in about two years ago, May 2018. It's the General Data Protection Regulations. And basically what Europe recognised was we our data privacy laws and data protection laws were outdated. Gone are the days where we're doing everything by um, manual filing. Everything's electronic now, and within a couple of seconds, your data could be all over the world. So you could be sitting here right now, and you could buy something on your phone, and your credit card details could fly across to USA, China, Mexico, anywhere in the world where that processor might be. And then they could start sharing that instantaneous with other people as well. So they realize the way people are using data and the way data is being processed now is very different, and the risks are very different. Are toys... Do they, we know there are bad people out there. Are there are toys a, a, a useful conduit for bad people to, to get to us, or is this just oversight by toy manufacturers? Do you think? Again, it's it's, it's a bit of a theme of the afternoon: conspiracy or cock up. You know, uh, are the manufacturers here? Were they, that, that you, are they ignorant of these problems? Aware of these problems? So, I mean. The law would require you to do what's called a data protection impact assessment before you launch a product or a service. And especially if you're selling that or if that is for the audience of children, then you need to give it another layer of protection. Right, so right. as a parent or as a, someone that, that's buying that gift, I would want to know that this gift I'm giving to my nephew or somebody that I hold very dear to me, it's going to keep them safe and it's not going to put them at harm of a predator. And if you look at some of the stuff that's been happening in the news um, recently where, you, you know, predators are finding innovative ways of getting in touch and grooming children, yeah. it's, it's very dangerous. And one of the things that I know uh, for a fact is a lot of uh, the victims are victims to, and the perpetrator is somebody that they actually know and yes. have a relationship with. And this gives them a secret way of creating a relationship with that child in order to groom them without the parents or the guardian being aware of exactly what's happening. To which end, let's talk about the £30 VTech Kiddie Gear Walkie Talkies. The problem with these, as, as I understand, Jamal, is that uh, anyone could start a two-way conversation with a child from a distance of up to 200 metres. That's, what, 650-odd feet away, way out of vision, potentially, of mum and dad. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and this is a problem. Anybody... How? How does someone start a conversation? Maybe this, we should keep that secret. I mean, is it that easy to, to I, do? I mean, it's very simple. All they need to do is wait for the kid uh, or the child to switch on the walkie-talkie, and they can just connect to that straight, straight away. away. If they have a walkie-talkie as well? Correct, yes. Okay. Well, any, any device that can send that signal out, they can start connecting and they can start talking to that child. And, you know, 
it could be as innocent as them starting off by saying um, this message from Santa Claus, for example. I'm one of the elves. Have you been a good boy? Have you been a good girl? Well, why don't you do this for me? You're giving me shivers, Jamal. You're giving me shivers. <laughs> now, by, by contrast, and this was also flagged up by, by Witch magazine, I'm, I'm, as a new parent, maybe I've got new issues to come to terms with, but I didn't think this one was so bad. This is a karaoke microphone uh, and singing machine. Um, X Passion and Tenver, I think are the brand names. And they allow people within 10 metres to send recorded messages as the Bluetooth connection has no authentication feature. Now, 10 metres, 30 odd feet. Mum and mum or dad are going to be around, presumably. Is that, is that, do you see that as a, as a, as a, I mean, a, as a major risk to children? I see it as a potential risk, but it's not huge, is it? Well, I mean, it, it really depends. So if you think about, uh, take a city like London, for example, and look at the concentration of it. You okay, could be living yeah, in a flat. Yeah. Uh, within 10 metres, you could have all sorts of people around you just in that 10 metre radius, so I me. think it really depends on um, where you You've live and me. how unlucky or unlucky you might be with your neighbours. Gosh, gosh, there's no good news with you, is there? It's all, it's all quite scary. Um, several toys that can be hacked as users don't have to use strong passwords for online accounts. Um, the Boxer Robot, an interactive artificial intelligence robot, and then we've got... Um, Block cells, Sphero, block cells, Sphero Mini. You can tell I haven't got kids of an age yet. <laughs> Sphero Mini and the Singing Machine were all found to have security issues, which lead them open to online hacking. Now, is that something that parents could address by just using decent passwords, Jamal? Um, so. The problem here, what, what we identified was that it doesn't actually require them to create strong passwords. So you could have something like ABC123. Right. Um, it doesn't necessarily That's have not, to Is have that not a, a strong password? Well, Damn I mean... It. <laughs> <laughs> you need to start changing your passwords, <laughs> this, is, this is possibly after I was uh, stolen. I had £8,500 gone away from me a year and a half ago. Maybe I should harden yeah, yeah. my passwords. So, so, so what, what, what we recognised here was they should actually be asking for a mixture of maybe um, less letters and numbers, maybe some capitals, maybe some special characters, just to make it that little bit harder to try and guess um, for people to stop hacking into that and taking over that device or, you know, putting whatever messages or videos uh, to your child. God, I'm, I'm scaring myself now. Um, where are you on witches, uh, the witch magazine's overview? That you mentioned the GDPR, but that they're asking the next government to make it mandatory for manufacturers to ensure smart products meet appropriate security standards before they are able to go on sale. Now, I don't know the GDPR, but isn't I would have assumed, and from the way you were talking about it, that was kind of the intention of the law in the first place. Um, absolutely. I mean, the intention was there, and they've always talked about privacy by design and default. So, I mean, before you start doing anything, they want you to start thinking about privacy. So, yes, uh, the GDPR does have some um, ha does have some articles in there that could support that. But it is up to a government to possibly make some specific things because the GDPR is not looking at toy manufacturers. It looks at anybody that processes any kind of personal data, and they can't be specific about what you need to do. So they give you guiding principles, because and it's up to businesses to follow those. Because I was thinking, if you're a sort of a backstreet toy manufacturer out in the Far East, you're not necessarily going to be fully up to speed with legislation in the UK. However, you might have a, a friendly importer here in the UK, and the next thing you know, your products are out on sale. Yeah, and I think this is the problem that we see a lot, um, especially around Christmas time, where you go to markets and you go to um, some, you know, not the branded high shops yeah. where they're selling um, toys that are potentially toxic to children and just like we have regulations that protect um, shops from selling these kind of things and getting to the hands of children we need to make sure that we now think that we're in the 21st century the toys are getting smart and when we've got smart devices and we've got smart toys we need to make sure that we have that additional layer of protection and that we're not just thinking about the toxicity from the plastic but also thinking about the harms that could come from um, smart devices as well. Nicely put, I like that because of course every parent thinks about the toxicity of the plastic but actually there's a, possibly a, a greater presence there within the actual product itself. Um, as, as, a, as a final thought Jamal, I mean you know your onions when it comes to you know, smart devices. Well, I'll be honest, I'm not particularly uh, smart to smart devices. If I was shopping for presents, what should I be looking out for? How can I protect myself as a consumer? How can I protect my children? What can I look for? What should I be looking for? 
So I would guess right now, stay away from the smart devices <laughs> uh, for toys that have been uh, pu pu published in the Witch Report. Uh, but what you would really want to look out for is um, devices, or if you are going to buy a smart device for a child, is how can you have control over that? How can you as a parent put a layer of protection where you can put a password or where you can uh, make sure that you have those settings in place? And obviously at home you can put firewalls in place, you can increase the security of anyone trying to access your network so that it's all protected and just a couple of uh, small uh, tweaks and just focusing on that security of the firewall or the internet um, passwords of your house could be a start. Jamal Ahmed, thank you very much for both scaring and reassuring us in equal measure. Jamal, the founder of Kazient Privacy Experts, data protection people. And I think there's so much of what he said is true. And I kept thinking all the way through the conversation, we talk about privacy. And I've still got a 20th century, you hear about privacy and it's like people peering over your garden wall or people peering out of curtains at you. It isn't. It's people looking at every financial transaction and every email you might be sending from the privacy of your home or workplace. Keep yourself safe. Keep your kids safe. You listen to Talk Radio.